Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm doing some late night sewing. I'm actually just now getting started on a project that I've waited so long to do. I don't know why I waited so long to do this, but I just kind of got lazy. I did end up getting some new equipment, so as you can probably see in my glasses, I got a ring light. It is so cool. So yeah, um, I'm actually going to be starting on my very first project. I purchased this McCall's M8177 pattern in a size 16. At least it's the size that fits me. And the purpose of this video is to show a little bit of my sewing skills. So I'm hoping that you'll enjoy not only. Oh, and this is my um, little nephew, Jackson. I just Jackson. made this video watch. I'll be linking his, um, his thing down below. So I'm filming this kind of late at night. So please excuse for the background noise. So for the pattern I'm doing, I'm doing actually pattern view A. So I've got to use, I believe, um, to my knowledge, I think I have about like maybe 12, 8 to 12 different pattern pieces that I'm working on. So of course I'll be following the instructions that I have in this video. So I'll be going back and forth between the provided instructions that they provided me to use and I'll be sewing on this. Um, the sewing machine that I'm using is a Singer Heavy Duty. I will say compared to the brother, you know, it's a little different, but you know, I started off with Singer, so I'm going to finish with Singer. And maybe in my future videos, you'll see me actually sewing on the Brother Pace Setter 200T. So, we're gonna get started. Okay, I lied to y'all. I wasn't gonna come back in the morning anyway. I was just trying to fix my princess seam because I had a little bit of oopsie. All right, I'm doing my second pattern piece to connect them together. And then I'm gonna come back and show you the next step, which is connecting uh, pattern piece three and sew them together with a straight seam at center back. Which of course it would be a notch there just in the case in her back. So yeah, matching up the notches. Good. really forgot to do a step I'm at the interfacing but it's okay I would do the <clears throat> excuse me I'm not actually doing it I'm gonna get there so looks like it's pattern piece 12 13 6 and 14 6 is the shoulder straps 12 is I believe is it is the front facing um 13 is back facing, and 14, hmm. 14, I wish I figured out what 14 is in a little bit, if I'm correct, no. It could be for buttons, but oh wait, no, 14 is not indicated for this pattern. That's why I, I think 14 is the belt. And that would be for pattern, that would be for view C. On to the second step. Well, second set of steps. I gotta stay stitch the edges. Hmm. 
my okay I gotta stay stitch these edges So yeah. Okay, so stay stitching is gonna be on one side here to the waist and the sippy case on the other side. Okay. So because I have a singer and I have seam allowances seam allowances on both sides, I could either just sew it like this, go on the left hand side, so I would get my seam allowances going this way, but I personally never really liked, I never sewed this way, but I'm gonna do what's comfortable for me, which is sewing on my right side, because I am dominant with my right hand. But, you know, for the more experienced sewers or the more experimental, you know, go ahead and try it out, see what you like. <laughs> but I'm gonna just do what's comfortable with me. So I'm going to flip it like this, as the back is facing me. I'm going to lay it down, and I'm going to go ahead and still at 5 8 seam allowance. Remember, with stay stitching, we do not have, um, we do not have five reverse. Y'all do not do this do this at home, but be safe about doing this. <laughs> okay. I figured out that for this pattern piece, um, but it's also gonna indicate in its um, directions that the single notches, all the notches much ma must match up, so of course, within your seam allowance, you're going to have a single notch first shown. Oh my gosh. Oh, and no other notches will be shown. So yeah, main thing is to match up this notch with this notch. So yes, we're going to pin carefully. We're going to first pin on both sides before we sew. <laughs> Sorry y'all, my stuff keeps cutting out. I also just realized that one of my pattern pieces, um, I cut one of the pattern pieces, I believe on the wrong side, but I feel like it won't matter for this specific uh, fabric because of the fact that the pattern um, in the fabric which is like the shimmer kind of shows on both sides so even though like one's like a tad bit lighter and brighter than the other i feel like overall it still could be like easily camouflaged Forgive my lighting in this situation. I am still trying to figure out all this um, new stuff. So I kind of took a hiatus. We're not going to talk about that. I'm trying to figure out the lighting. So this is my little setup. I'm at my grandma's house. And obviously I know you can't tell, but I actually am sewing. So not sewing, but I'm actually ironing out my fabric. You see, the important part of sewing is that you do need to iron out your fabric whilst you're sewing. Preferably, you need to iron out your fabric before you sew, as well as ironing out when you're creating a seam allowance. Best known as sewing two pieces of fabric together. So as you can see, I'm working on the back yoke as we left off. And, well, for me, it was a few days ago for y'all, maybe a few seconds ago. And I am pressing out my seams. So what I'm thinking about doing 
if I'm not lazy, is creating French seams out of the seams allowance. Because I want to make it look neat, and I did do a year of sewing, so I should not be lazy about it. And actually create a beautiful closed seam. I intend to wear this garment, but because of how opaque it is, I'll see how that turns out. <laughs> so... I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna finish sewing and not, y'all, please. I'm gonna finish ironing out the rest of my, um, rest of my, well, some of sewn pieces and I'll get back with you when I'm done. Quick tip before y'all go. So you see this spot right here? Okay. For the home sewers and professional sewers, if you know this spot, you know. But for those who don't know, this means that you left water in your iron and it rusted. And if you have any sort of fabric, this is like the number one thing not to do. This is my first time sewing at home and I literally forgot to pour out my old water that I did not even use. So please, please folks, don't do this because I already ruined a little bit of my fabric. Hopefully I can wash that out, but quick tip. Don't get brown water. Clean out your irons, please. Back to the main point. <laughs> Okay, so now that we got our fiber pieces sewn out and already um, pressed and ironed, I'm going to go ahead and attach the piece and actually start where I left off. So yeah, we'll see where this takes us. Okay, so I'm finally atti attaching the side back to the center back piece and I'm matching up all the notches. As you can probably see, one of those tiny little notches that I made right there. And I'm gonna keep on going all the way down and then I'm gonna go ahead and sew at 5 eighths of a seam allowance. I don't think I'm gonna worry about facing this. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just stitch it. As you can see, I have sewn officially now the full back seams. So, what we have the inside is this. I'm going to go ahead and press this out, and we'll be back going ahead to attach the pockets. So, I think I figured this out. So, the next step is to attach the pockets to the side of the um, front and back side pieces, and then the stitch them at a fourth seam allowance. So what I'm thinking that I'm doing is that I'm attaching three sides together. And at the end of the day, like I feel like it doesn't matter because it will be shown on the inside. It won't be like shown on the outside, it's the inside. So I'm kind of doing this like, you know, kind of guessing how this is going to go. But for the seeds and pearls out here, please do this correctly. Ignore the box. Yes, mom. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my cat, Noni. She was a rescue from the streets. And this is what I have to deal with. Every time I have an activity that I do on the table, she comes along and she just puts all her hair all over it. Featuring Noni, y'all.
so as you can see <laughs> i know it took a little while but i went ahead and pinned all the way down my side seam and i left about like three fingertips worth of space between the top and the bottom indicating that's like my place markers to leave for like openness and then as well as um you know of course finishing off here and then i pinned my pockets so that i know i so that i know to go back and then sew these to be closed at a 5 8 seam allowance I like to show you guys a little bit of the dress, even though this is definitely not the final thing. Just just gonna see if the pockets work. So testing it out. Oh my! Wait, hold up. Y'all done. Y'all done hype me up now. Y'all done hype me up. Wait. This is really fitted, but it's okay. Y'all don't so much yeah. Okay. So Okay, anyway, you already seen this, you already seen this, you already can tell. Okay. Hey guys, so I was meaning to trim my inner basin. I didn't do that at the beginning. But it's okay because we're gonna do it now. So it says to trim at the corners. So if you have product, I think this is M8817 of the spring summer collection of the McCall's 2021 patterns. Um, so pattern six is excluded because of the, those are the straps, but pattern piece 12 and 13 need to be trimmed so please follow the instructions first but once again all new
So I'm using the safety pin method to turn out my, forget the extra thread, to turn out my strap so we actually see the right side and not the interfacing. So I'm gonna just clip these. Hmm. I'll be back. I um I need to study this method more. <laughs> okay, so you know how I told you guys I was gonna be back really soon. Um, okay, so I lied. Okay, life happens. I switched my machine because I don't have the button hole foot. And then just I got lazy and I didn't come back to it, so catch y'all up. I have a brother, a pace setter, PS 200T, and I actually really like this. My mom got it for me when I was in Greensboro. It was this little sewing back, um, sewing vacuum shop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this threaded up. I know that I need to get my bobbin threaded too. So while this is just going on, you know, we're just gonna enjoy this nice little time with me trying to get this together. Oh, there's a one. <laughs> and the fact is that it has directions it has directions in here and I'm trying to figure out where is the actual thing that's telling me to go so I think it goes here Y'all, we got somewhere. We got somewhere. We got lost for a second. Snow! If you have a dog and they see someone, if you know, you know. Oh, that's right. I forgot with the brothers now, at least with the pace setter, you just wind it around a few times. Okay, I fixed that little huh? accident, so now we can wind our bobbin. Okay. 
y'all pray for me. <laughs> I did read the instructions. It's just a girl is a little impatient. Okay, now. realized that I forgot a major important part which is me getting down my iron and my iron board because of the fact that when I want to sew I want to sew on a nice clean flat surface that doesn't have any wrinkles especially like if you sew with a fabric that has wrinkles girl what are you doing unless you're trying to create ripples or some type of hot couture what are you doing so okay I'll be just fixing this real quick and then I'll be back hopefully <laughs> You'll see me in the next clip with all my stuff together. All right, real quick before I go upstairs and I have to get my iron board and stuff, I wanted to show you that I got some turners. I believe It's called a quick turn. I got this at Joanne's. And you'll see these two pieces later on coming in the video. These are the straps to my dress. And I tried to do the um, the safety pin method, if y'all know what I'm talking about, which is basically using the safety pin to try to turn the fabric inside out if you're trying to turn it for something that has a really narrow space. A girl tried and it didn't work. So I had to buy me some turners. And I'm probably going to need it later on anyway with my sewing. So I decided to go ahead and invest in it now. I'm like using these things without even reading the back what is going on. I don't think it should be that difficult. I think I'll just pretty much, you know. Y'all don't judge me. Yeah, I'm actually be right back. I'm gonna have to actually look up the video on how to do this because this does not make any sort of sense <laughs> on how you flip these things. Like, it shouldn't be that hard. All right, so I finally got everything set up. I ironed out my pieces, which you can probably see like the body of the dress over there. I did like a quick test run on how to do the straps. So what it looks like I'm gonna do, I'm using the Drit uh, quick turns. I'm using the, I'm using the half for the, um, you can see that guys, you can probably see it right here. That probably went down a little bit, yeah, it's okay. It's okay, okay. So I'm gonna stick the two all the way the three at the top so the two at the top and then I'm going to seal off the top because it looks like with a lot of the people who've done this they've actually like closed off on their end but um in the directions it tells me to close it off once it's already turned so i'm gonna try to close it off and then try to stick that back down in there so it would look like this and so then it looks like i just Okay, so okay. Scratch that idea. Scratch that. What we're gonna what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and 
I would just baste the ends. And which, what I mean by that is I'm gonna baste the end of one, um, both of the straps with a, let's see. I think I'm gonna do a fourth of an inch seam allowance. I just wanna carry this down here because I'm a little nervous. All right, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and close the flap. And of course, even though I want this in a straight line, if it's not perfect, it's not going to feel like anything. I'm going to do that for both of the straps. All right, this time I believe it's going to work. So since one end is closed, I can stick it into the top end. Take it all the way to the bottom. Okay, turn off this little excess piece of thread. Okay, right now I'm going to stuff this in. Okay, we're going to go and press some selfies and then we can finally start paying attention to our directions. Alright, just making sure we pinned uh, both straps on the front bodices of the dress. I'm about to base the straps to the bodice. Just catching everyone up. Yeah. yeah, so to be correct, we went ahead and we basted the straps on to the, yeah, we basted the straps onto the bodice. And now I'm about to work on my face too, so I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. And it shows that I have to stitch faces 13 and 12 together. So it says stitch front facing 12, so I just did back facing 13 at side, and then finish outer edge facing. Y'all, this is actually very therapeutic. <clears throat> you know, being a beginner sewer and then following along the commercial pattern piece, you learn things along the way, I figured out. Like, first things first. I know that you need to read the directions before you sell it. I know everyone else is telling me that, but I was not listening to them because I was just super duper excited. Now I'm kind of like, ow. It hurts. Okay, so three sides go together. Three sides of the fabric stay together. They get sewn together like sisters. Okay. 
students. Okay, perfect. The interfacing the interface thing showing to me. And then over here, I've got the sides, pretty yeah. sides together. Yeah. And then showing the match that we match up. Well, I kind of didn't like this interface thing. Yeah. I had to like kind of like scrap interfacing together because I did it wrong the first time and I wasn't going to be sure to have any left. So yeah, now I'm attaching my interfacing together. Not interfacing. I'm Lord, look at me. I'm attaching my facings together so they can be all together and be all pretty together. Okay. So, so it kind of looks like this, and then I'll wrap around the sides like that. And boom. Yeah. All right. I will sew at. It's like I'm supposed to sew always at a 5 8 seven knots, but, you know. I went to um, UNCG in college in the beginning, so like I've always done my sewing either in my past fourth or eighth. My eighth, I did only. I'll press this out and we'll be back. Oh, dang it, I thought I was done. Okay, but so far, I guess I can show you. I have pressed in one fourth of the outer edge on both the front facings. Uh, for the back facing, I'm gonna have to do the same thing. So yeah, I just realized that I made a mistake, but that's okay, you know, it's a, I, had, I guess it's not a mistake. I guess it's more of a haven't finished yet. So, okay, I'll be back again. And then I'll be able to sew this down so then I can attach my facings to my, to my bodice. And then I'll almost be done. So, okay, be right back. Okay, so. I actually, once again, did not read the directions. And finishing is basically stitching at like one fourth, so creating a one fourth seam allowance, and then basically creating a finishing off of that. But since I don't have a, um, I don't have a pinking shears, or I don't have like an actual thing that creates an over, well, I, well, I think I can create an overcast. I think I just have to do number 29. I think I would do, okay, I think I would do that for 29. Okay. All right. Might as well add a little bit of detail to have a little bit of fun. Okay. So where's my outer edge? Because it doesn't matter which side it's going to be on. Well, actually, yes, it does. So I'm going to do... Fudge, that hurts. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna sew this at a half seam allowance. Yeah. And I'm gonna set this all the way to zero. That will sew it, yeah, because that will start it at the point here. Okay, so I finally did my um, finishing for the dress, and yeah, finally I am in the frame. So it looks like I attached my facings, like they're going to be, 
basically this is gonna flip over itself it's showing that I attached you know of course pretty sides together so the wrong side of my facing of yeah my facing will be facing me and the pretty side will be Let's see. I make sure. Do I do the last step correctly? I feel like I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. So, yeah. to get creative for a second. I think I had to do pleats, so here's what happened. My inner face never hit me. So my facing was not completely matching with the front pieces, back pieces, and side pieces of my bodice dress. So I had to take in around the back because I felt like that was the most appropriate place to try to bunch together the fabric what, without it having to look so completely like what happened. Basically, to kind of show here, I've kind of made pleats. So on the back, it looks like this. Had to get creative for a second. So hopefully when this flips over, it doesn't look so... Oh my god, you know, it doesn't look that bad. It all just is a little sprucing up, you know? Take a short break and we'll be right back. Hi. This is gonna be the definitely the last day of me sewing. I know, I know, I slacked, I slacked, I slacked. Give me some slack, okay? Life happens, okay? But good thing is that I will be finished by the time. <laughs> Well, before this evening, I will finish this pro this project. I do this to myself every time. I don't set up the iron, but hopefully, just pour a little bit of water in there. I'll plug up my machine. All I got, let's see. All I gotta do is the straps and the buttons and then the the final hems. That's three things, and I'm so happy that this will be coming to an end. Only because I really want to see the final product. You know, last clip, well, yesterday was y'all lost like a, maybe a few seconds, maybe a minute. Um, I had to actually create pleats, which is something that I've never done before. But for some reason, my fabric and my facing were not matching. So I had extra fabric versus my facing. I believe that was an error on my end based on you know probably wrong measurements maybe i cut out something wrong but now since i added please everything matches up perfectly i just don't know how it would affect me wearing the dress considering which i probably can always you know adjust the straps later on once it's done but yeah i took him probably about an inch from each side yeah because it's about yeah, about an inch from each side just to make things match. So I might have to 
not make the straps as tight as I want them to. That's okay, you know. This is my first project that I want to see if I can wear. I'm a little bit nervous about that, but we're just gonna see what we're gonna see. I'll be back. I'll be putting some water in my iron so I can, you know, obviously press things out and I think make it look all cute. I can adjust this. Hopefully in my future setup, we can have this looking more better so you guys can actually see what I'm sewing. I don't know guys, maybe I might even purchase some equipment, who knows? Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so, I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but got my little tomato over here so I can put in the I can put in things. I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this because. Okay, so pretty much I see that according to the way it's viewed, we're going to be sewing this. We're going to be basically attaching the straps to the back of the dress. I think that's correct according to the model. Oh. And we're just getting ready to sew, so wish me luck, wish me luck. <laughs> okay, finally. And yes, I know I sewn over the original stitching that I was meant to leave an opening at. But I'm trying to estimate where it is so I know I can go back and mark it and all that stuff. I'll be right back in a second. Okay, I've done this off camera, so I, I believe I already had stayed this. I sewed like the full back, so I sewed everything together. So when I flipped it, I tried to evaluate where my straps were going to go. Um, so yeah, I attached it to the far corner of the back, of both the backs. When by attach, I mean just pin them. So I'm about to undo my seams I created and then I'm gonna go back in and then sew it like that. So by the time I, you know, by the time like I see it, you know, actually be looking, yeah. I'll just do it and it'll be better done like rather than explain it. Yeah. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> Okay. Okay, I attached the straps, so we're gonna flip this over. Where is this extra thing coming from? Oh, it says to tack for facing at the seams, which I did notice when I did try to try it on earlier. I think that was off camera. It wouldn't stay. So I can understand why we gotta tack them down. I'm gonna go ahead and press this down again so I can make sure it like stays down and then I can sew it. Then I believe the only thing next is the finishing and the buttons, which the buttons might be the hardest thing because I really don't do buttons like that, but I'm gonna try. Okay, so I'm back and I did some what? Oh my god. So I'm back and I did some trimming on my dress. I fixed my straps because <clears throat> my straps were actually crisscross. Please excuse the phone ringing. 
Um, I did skip a step to tack down the facings because I actually had no idea what it means and I was afraid that it was going to show up on the other side of the dress. So I was like, okay, just leave it alone. You know, I can always do that step later because it's not going to really affect the construction of the dress. I did have a pleat in the back, which is kind of cute. It's a little bit awkward. You know, it's okay. It's my first time doing the dress. It's my first time. And yeah, so... What I'm going to do now is get the finishings, in, which is basically creating the hem on the dress. <clears throat> and then afterwards, I'm going to create the buttonholes and attach them. And my dress will be completed. And then I can't wait to show you guys my final look at the dress. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get the facings done. So. I'm just going to skip this step to like trim the facing and to like try to trim off 5 8 I feel like it's not necessary since I evened up the bottom. So yeah, I'm just going to turn it in at five, with 5 8 to the seam allowance. And I decided to bring my iron down here because I'm lazy like that. And just basically hold it down with, where's my seam gauge? And I'm gonna hold it down with um my pins. So yeah, wish me luck. So I'll put that over there. Okay, I have a turn faces to the inside. We have five eighths narrow hem. Okay, so what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to just sew the bottom at 5 8 of the seam allowance, turn it in on itself, and then fold it under to have like a really thin narrow hem. So yeah, that's what I'm about to do. That will just be simple for me. It's a little bit amateur, yes, but you know, we're just trying out new things. We're trying out new things. We're going to make it work. Okay, so I'm folding this back under. Okay, so what I did was that I created a 5 8 of a. I basically kind of sewed 5 8 to have a seam allowance of 5 8 so I know where I turn under because of the fact that I'm lazy and I don't want to bring down my iron board. Place it all the way over there. So, yeah. Because there's a lot to bring downstairs. So, yeah. I'm going to be sewing at five eights. I think that the top is going to be a little bit tight, but I might end up wearing this dress without a bra, to be honest. Like, that's the only way I can make this work, because it fits everywhere else. I just, I have naturally big boobs <laughs> for my frame. That's important to say. For my frame, it's kind of big. So, yeah, that's my kind of already plain, you know. I wish I could find a way to put this into my favorite mirror.
these are not the best because like obviously chicken scratch but i went ahead and transferred over my button uh hole markings as well as my button markings so i was reading and pretty much yeah pretty much i think i got this set up right i just gotta put the I just gotta come at it in a weird way. It's pretty much like from down here. I have a short intermission. I gotta take all these extra things off of the thing and then I'll just clean up my area.